Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. And God gave me some scriptures for us and I'm gonna read Matthew 6. I'm gonna start with verse 19. The whole thing won't be on your screen. Only the last few verses, the key verses. But this is what God gave me in considering today's service. And I have a few scriptures I want you to consider to meditate on as you start your year off. And we also provided these white pieces of paper here for you to write anything down that you would like to write that God may give you today as we already heard a word about trusting God. And on here as well are seven prayers that we're gonna pray with or pray together with uh, as a church. And, but you can use that paper now if you'd like. And the scripture I have is, is Matthew 6, verse 19. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. You can often find where someone's heart is based off of what they store here on earth or what they store in heaven. And so the scripture here is Jesus teaching the crowds and the disciples to to not store up treasures here on earth because it won't last long, but instead to do the will of God and his kingdom, to do the things he's called us to do, and that would be to store up treasures in heaven where nothing will destroy them. And he goes on in verse 22, your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. Jesus is saying essentially here, that we need to have a new heart and a new mind so that we will have new eyes to see things the way we should see them. And that if we have a new heart and a new mind, our eyes will focus on what is good and then if we do, we will store in now in our lives things that are good, that belong in our hearts. So guarding your eyes and guarding your ears is key to having light inside of you. But there is also a counterfeit light, and it says, and if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. That's deep. We know what true light is because we know it's Jesus, and whatever he says is good and holy, that is the true light. So we focus on Christ, and we will know what truly is real light, what is true, what is righteous and holy. Now, this is all going to connect in a moment. Because he goes to say in verse 24, no one can serve two masters for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So our serving, our dedication can be divided, not just by money, but other things that we may idolize or worship. And we can't serve two things. God calls us to serve him and him alone, amen? To put him above all things. And if we don't, if we even put people next to God, we will struggle and one of them is going to win. And I said this a few weeks ago, we tend to gravitate towards the the thing or person we can see every day. We tend to serve that more than we serve God. And God wants us to have spiritual eyes again. Think about this, okay? The first portion of scripture was to see things in heaven and store things in heaven. And then to see the light of Christ and to have the eyes and heart of Christ, okay, so to have the purity and the light of Christ in us to see eternally there too. And now he wants us to think eternally as well by serving God over anything else. And then verse 25, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, 
Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? So true, isn't it? They can't. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith or trust in God? So verse 31, our, our key scriptures will be on the screen for you. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And then this is the key verse, seek the kingdom of God, there's that eternal focus again. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Some translations say seek the kingdom of God and seek his righteousness. I love the NLT version because it actually says the interpretation in the Greek to live righteous. Don't just seek righteous living out and try to find out what that looks like. No, live righteously. How many of us have always heard this? Seek first the kingdom of God and he will give you everything you need. How many of you heard it like that? Yeah, we missed the second part. Seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. It's not just in the seeking of God by going to church and praying and, and reading his word, but it's also the doing and obeying and living what his word says, living what God says to do, trusting God. It's the hard part, isn't it? To read the word and then trust him and live it out. Church, I wanna encourage you with this. This year, make it a point to live righteously. Make it a point not just to seek God, but to do what God says. And he will take care of all your needs. Now Jesus was a brilliant teacher and he had everything compa uh, compacted together, um, collected together here by talking about trusting in God instead of worrying about the money. Trusting in God instead of worrying about your daily things so much. What he was trying to teach the crowd and the disciples and what he's teaching us today is do not let the worries of this world and wealth and money and all those things distract you and preoccupy you from the most important thing. Seek his kingdom. Seek him and what he wants you to do and live for him this year. That is a challenge for me, it's a challenge for all of us. I love, I love the scripture that I, God brought to my attention as well. It goes well with our our New Year Day, Lamentations 3, 21 through 23, be on the screen for you as well. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Why does the author of Lamentations have hope? Why does he need to have hope? Well, this book is about the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And what happened was, the people didn't trust God for protection. They didn't trust God to provide help in time of need. And instead, they went to the Egyptians and the Edomites because Babylon was getting ready to come against them. And instead of looking to God and trusting that God's gonna show up and protect them and help them, they looked to man. And because of that, God allowed them to be destroyed. And even the temple. They didn't seek God they sought man for help. And things were desolate, it was terrible, it was bad. But in the middle of that book, in chapter three, 
The author says, yet this I call to mind, and in spite of all the destruction, in spite of all the despair, I have hope because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. What does that mean? Every day his mercies are new? Yes. Do you know why? I was praying on this, and God was helping me understand this. His mercy is new every minute. His mercy is new every second because every second, every minute, every hour, every day, you have a chance to repent or you have a chance to live the way God has called you to live. Your day can change at any moment. Your life can change at any moment. In the blink of an eye, in one moment with God, his mercy is upon you if you will return to him and trust him again and do as he says. And the writer of this book some believe it's Jeremiah, some believe we don't know who it is. I believe it's Jeremiah, and it's lamenting. He's lamenting of the destruction of Jerusalem. But Jeremiah is saying that we can start now. We can be a different nation. Church, we as a church, or you as a Christian, can be a different person from this day forward. Every day you wake up, God's grace is available, amen? Amen. Every day God, or every day you wake up, God's mercy is available. His love is always there, but he calls the people in this book to turn back to him, and he calls us to turn back to him as well. So maybe today, your turning back is to start seeking him and living righteously. Maybe that's the beginning. Maybe it's to confess some things and repent of things that were your old life yesterday, but today you're going to be a different person. And by the way, his mercy and grace is power for you to do those things. So he doesn't just forgive you, he provides you with the power to do it. Now that's an amazing God. His grace is with you to do what he asks you to do, to live the righteous life. To close here, I, with this little devotional, just these scriptures I want you to consider. God, uh, God gave me a word in this past, or the past year, and I never preached on it. I never really took time to do a whole sermon on it. And I evaluated whether it was just for me or whether it was for the church as a whole, because sometimes God gives us words and it's really just for you and not always for the whole church. But being a pastor, I have a role to give words to the church if I believe they're for the church, and I do believe this is for the church. And it was a tough word that God convicted me on when I was reading the Bible, when I was worshiping, and I'm gonna share it with you going into the new year because I think it's applicable to today. Because we just read God's love is new every day. God's love is always there every day. But one of the things that God convicted me of and, and was saying to share with the church and I prayed about this for a while now, and I'm gonna share it. I think we really spend a lot of time singing songs and reading scriptures to remind us that God loves us. And we need that, right? Like we need those reminders because the devil's always trying to make us feel ashamed and guilty all the time, and we feel that way sometimes, and sometimes people make us feel that way. So there's, there's nothing wrong like even Ephesians 3 says, and Paul prays that the church would know how wide, how far, how deep is God's love for us. There's nothing wrong with that. But one day I was sitting here during, in worship and I've been reading the Bible and God kept bringing a message back to me again and again and I haven't been able to escape it even this past week. And this is what God was saying. You know how much I love you, but how much do you love me? How much do you love me? You know, I've showed you my love. When are you gonna love me? Are you gonna show your love for me? And we need that affirmation, like I said. We need to know that God loves us because this world can drain that belief and we can start to lose that focus when we take our eyes off God or put our eyes on the storms and, you know, does God love me if I'm going through all these things? Well, of course he does. But I think it's fair for us to also ask, when are we gonna show God that we love him? When are we gonna tell him and show him and live in such a way that it says, I love you, God, 
I love you. And Jesus tells the disciples how to do that before he leaves the earth to go with the Father. He says in, in John 14, 15, it's a really simple verse, it's on the screen. If you love me, obey my commandments. Don't just sing songs of love. Don't just sing songs about God loving you. Live a life that says you love God, Ryan. I should say Pastor Ryan, sorry. <laughs> Church, Calvary, lo love God. Live a life that doesn't just sing songs to God, but lives a life that obeys God. He says it in John 15, 9 and 10, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Now, if Jesus obeys God's commandments, how much more should we? And of course, we're human, we're not Jesus, and we need his help to do that, amen? How many can agree we're not the best at always obeying God's commands? Now, you may be asking, okay, I know what the kingdom of God is, I believe it's seeking God and doing his will, doing what he wants for my life. That's seeking him first and then doing what he says, living righteously. And the word says to love God. And if you love him, you obey commands. So what are the commands? And we know it's this, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, to give your whole body as an act of worship, to give your whole life as an act of worship. And then we also know it says to love one another Love your neighbor as yourself. So now we know that to love God is to love him and also love others, amen? But there was another great commandment that he gave us. It was the great commission. Go and make disciples. Go and reach the lost. Help them believe in Jesus. And sometimes that's one of the hardest ones. It's hard to love people at times. Sometimes you may struggle to love God and show him that love, whatever it may be. But he's called us to love him. And we do that by obeying at least those three commands. To be faithful to God and how we live and how we worship him in everyday life. To love people around us and to help people follow Jesus, become a disciple of Jesus themselves. Amen? Now here's what an encouraging scripture verse says in Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Amen. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So we know that God's gonna work everything out. He's gonna work out everything in your life this year Love him. He's going to do it. Trust him. He's going to do it. To help you grow this year, we want to give you uh, and point your attention to a few things to help you in this endeavor to seek him first and you know, to use today, tomorrow, tonight, you know, to take advantage um, of this time now that you know that God's coming back, right? Jesus is coming back. And you know, the, the, the earth is groaning for Jesus to come back. So his mercies are available right now. And if you're not ready for his return, I want to encourage you while we reflect here soon and spend more time in worship, I want to encourage you to get your heart ready today, all right, to, to begin to seek him and his will for your life. Begin to live righteously this year and ask him for the help to do it, amen? We all need it. But to help you, with, we have provided some tools for you, and we have two ways that you can read through the Bible this year and two different um, reading plans. We have one that's chronological, which is what scholars believe is the dated time that the books were penned and written, and so you can read through the Bible that, and we provided uh, each day, starting today, or you can start later and catch up later. And what you can do is just scratch off each day that you've read it, and then we also have the traditional um, layout in the Bible that you would see in your everyday Bible. And so we have that in the blue or this, or you can also download this online as well. We only have a limited copies of these,
but if you prefer to do an online version, you can also find that on our website at calvarydover.org and click on media and then resources. And you can also just take a picture of this as well. So Calvary Dover um, uploaded our own U version where we're using one uh, U version Bible plan reading through the year. And so you can check that out as well. Some of you like to do more digital, some of you like to have the paper. And we made it small enough so you can just kind of slide it in your Bible and have it there for the year. We also are asking that you would, uh, and I'm asking uh, particularly, that you would pray with me all year as much as we can. If you can, pray this daily. Pray with me daily. And I, we provide this for you today. These are just seven prayer prompts, seven different topics to pray for our church and for one another. And we're gonna practice that. This is our prayer service today. And so we're going to practice that here in a moment. I'm gonna have the team come back up and we're gonna pray over these together as a church. And then if you're not aware, one more resource we have on the calvarydover.org and then click on media and resources. You're gonna see something called Right Now Media. It's a great uh, online video library of studies of the books of the Bible and topics to help you grow. That is a free resource for you. Uh, we purchased that uh, years ago and we still have many subscriptions um, allowed. So if you'd like to you know, watch these videos at home and study the Bible with people, uh, you can do that as well. And they're free to you and it's all on our website. And I wanna encourage you to find a few people to do these reading plans with and once a week just check in on each other, share key verses that spoke to you, share some things, pray with one another, encourage one another as you read through the Bible. Um, you, you, uh, you'd be surprised how much you can get read and accomplished in, in five days. Um, I believe our reading plan actually takes the weekend off, and, um, but it's up to you if you wanna read every day and finish early. So I pray that these tools will help you as you grow as well. Why don't we stand together? We're gonna spend time. You can come to the altar if you want as we spend time in prayer and reflection with God. And this is my prayer for you. It's, I call it to grow in love. <clears throat> a prayer for us, really. It's in Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And if you have these papers, you can hold on to them right now because we're gonna go through these and pray these. If you can have that, that one scripture up real quick, I want, I want everyone to see this. This is a prayer for our church. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation. That's the results of your salvation, Jesus Christ. May you be, always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God, amen. That's a prayer for you as a church, prayer for us. It's in Philippians 1, 9 through 11. Why don't we go to God and pray over these and <clears throat> I, the reason why I'm asking you to pray with me is because this is what I would pray about as a pastor for our church. And I believe there's strength in numbers, amen? And I believe if we pray these things in one accord, we come together and pray these things in one accord, we're gonna see God work in ways we have never seen before. We're gonna see God do miracles. We're gonna see signs and wonders. God is gonna move powerfully through this church if we would agree together and pray for these things, Amen. So let's begin to pray. And you can agree with me by just saying amen and just praying them as well. Heavenly Father, we pray that we will live a life of worship unto you. Not just in public, but in private as well. We pray that we would attend our weekly services hungry for you. That God, we would come expecting and that, God, we would leave here filled with your Holy Spirit, filled with your love to go out and love those around us. God, we don't want to attend church just to go through the motions and check off the list. 
We come expecting, come ready to pray for others, come ready to be filled with your word and your spirit. That's our prayer for this year, God. God, I pray for the salvation of family, friends, neighbors, and coworkers. We pray for the prodigals that need to come home to you that have left you. We pray for those who are skeptics, who are questioning everything. Maybe they're trying to believe based off of knowledge rather than faith. God, I pray that you would bring them home. We lift up our enemies, God. Your word says to pray for our enemies, to do good to them, to bless them. God, we pray that you would humble our enemies, whoever they may be, whether it's against the church, whether it's against us individually, Lord. We pray, God, for a humbling, Lord, and a love to come from them, Lord, instead, and a love for us, a love from us to them as well. We pray for reconciliation, forgiveness, humility, Lord, with our enemies. Lord, we pray that we'll be laborers, workers to serve in the church, in the harvest of Delaware, the harvest fields of people who don't know you, and in the world. God, we pray that our compassion for the lost will increase and move us to act. Lord, let us not just say we have compassion, but may we do something about it. Give us the hands and feet to act, Lord. Give us the confidence that we know you're there with us and you'll take care of it. And God, we pray we will grow and mature into disciple makers who can teach and lead those who decide to follow Jesus. God, help us to grow. Help us to know our word. Help us to be prayer warriors, Lord. Help us to be confident in knowing that we can help guide others to follow you. We pray for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to be upon us to build and equip the church and the new believer. God, for all those salvations, we need workers to come alongside them and help them grow. Provide those, Lord. We pray that we will be a generous and faithful church to give in our tithes and offerings. God, I pray that we would get our, our finances in order, Lord, so that we can be generous, not just to the church, but to those in need around us. God, provide in every way financial blessings and breakthroughs for God's people, for your people, Lord. God, there are people who are in need desperately, Lord, that love you. God, I pray that you would provide for them. And Lord, provide through us as a church. Lord, provide the breakthrough for the mortgage payoff, God. God, we do not want to be in debt with a mortgage company. We want to pay this off. Lord, we ask you to provide miracle blessings for that, Lord. Miracle blessings for homes and families. Blessings for the church's mortgage, Lord. And Lord, blessings for our missionaries around the world. God, they're even working on less funds than us. Lord, we pray you provide abundantly from your heaven, from the gates, from the windows, just flood, Lord, their accounts with your blessings, Lord. God, we pray for the unity and the perseverance of the church. God, we need to be one right now. We know that. We need to be on the same side of your word and you. God, our church and churches around the world are under attack against the enemy. We unite, we, we make sure we keep our eyes on you and the grace and peace that we have for one another, God, that we won't let the devil divide us, God that we will come together in one accord and we will persevere through this world. And God, we will remain faithful to your grace and truth. As we worship, as we serve, we grow together, God. We depend on your grace, each of us, and we depend on your truth to live for you. And God, help us to show the grace and the truth to one another as we worship, as we serve, as we grow closer to you together. And God, we come to you and we pray for the leadership and the vision of our church. God, I thank you for our board and our elders. I thank you for our pastors. I thank you for the, the body who's elected us, Lord. God, I thank you for our church members and our partners and everyone, Lord. And God, we need your help to lead and guide this church. So Lord, we look to you for direction this year. Lord, we look for, to you for strength and provision guidance and wisdom and courage to lead Calvary forward in a world 
that is turning their back on you, God, we're turning towards you. So God, lead us in the way we should go. We pray these things, trusting you, knowing, God, that you will do these things. And God, we believe these prayers are according to your will and your word. So we know that you will answer them. (laughs) Thank you, God. Lord, I pray that we would be the answer to these prayers, that we would open our hearts to be a part of the change, a part of the answered prayers that are on this list. And for the prayers that will be added in our personal time and our personal prayer life, God, I pray, Lord, they would be according to your will and word and they would be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.